Hey, what's up? In this last forms tutorial, we are going to create a form that allows a user to schedule a meeting. And for this form, um, we are going to create four different items of input. We're going to create a name, an email, a date, and a time. Uh, whenever you're creating forms, you have to think about how you're going to format them. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to use tables. Uh, we're going to use a table with four rows and two columns to format uh, the the label on the left and the actual input, the form input on the right. So let's get started. If you do not have any experience with tables, then I would recommend going back and checking out my tutorial earlier on in the Dreamweaver CS4 series about tables. Um, I'm first going to create a table with four rows. I'm going to create one row at a time. I'm going to create the first row and then I'm going to create two columns inside that row. And then I'm going to copy that row four times, just like this. There we go. So now we have four rows inside of our table. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually create a form to to wrap up our uh, form items in. So we're going to go over here to our insert forms and we're going to click on form. And we're going to put the action as a number sign, which uh, usually you would insert uh, the link to some PHP or some ColdFusion or ASP code to handle the form, but for this example, we're just dealing with actual building, actually building the forms themselves and uh, not handling them. Uh, we are going to validate them, though. So now we have our form. I'm going to take this closing tag. I'm going to cut that and put it at the end of our table here, just like that. All right. So now that we have our form, we have to think about what we're going to put in our form. And as I said before, we're going to put in a name. We're going to put in an email. We're going to put in a date. We're also going to put in a time. And what I did right there was I put the label in the first column of each row. And in the second column of each row, we're going to put our input. So for the name, we're not going to validate it. We're just going to give it a text field. And we're going to give it a name of meeting name and now we're going to have um, an actual text field that's going to be validated based on an email so we're going to click inside of the second column in the second row and click on spry validation text field just like that I'm going to give it an ID of email there we go and since it's the properties of this spry aren't showing up down here, I'm going to click on Paste Properties and say OK. And now we have our spry text field properties down here. And for this particular input box, we're going to make sure that it's going to be validated on an email address. And that is that for the email. And now we're going to do the same thing, except instead of email, we're going to do date. So say spry validation text field ID is date and click on paste properties and say OK. Now we can see that this is of type date. We can also see the format here. Um, we're going to go ahead and add that to the hint just so they know, just so the user knows exactly what they need to put in inside that particular field. And lastly, we're going to give the user the ability to select a time from a drop-down list. So to do this, we're going to click on Spry Validation Select. We're going to give an ID of time, and we're going to say OK. And that has created our select tag for us. And so we need to actually add some list values. We're going to start by saying 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and 12 p.m. There we go. Okay, so now we have some options inside of our select menu. 
and to get the actual values uh, or the properties for our drop down we're going to click on page properties and say ok and I'm going to go ahead and copy this option with a 9 a.m. and paste it above the one I just copied and then I'm going to change this value to blank just like that and refresh here and make sure you have the do not allow blank value inside of the sprite select that way if they try to submit this blank value then it's not going to allow them to do that and that well actually that is not it we still need to add in our submit button so go ahead and say button submit and then say ok let me just take a look at this code make sure everything's alright looks like that's good good to go we have our form and our submit alright so let's let's take this and put it outside the table there we go alright now let's check this out so you can see that the submit went to the very top and that's strange we'll look at that in the code in a second we're going to type in name and email and then say um, 2010 give it a time of 11 a.m. and that should be good enough to submit and what should happen is these should turn green just to say okay they're good to go and you saw them turn green and that is basically all you need to do to create a working form uh, let's go back here and let's create a row for this submit button that way it's not at the very top and I added in that call span too which means uh, that it spans two columns there we go let's run this and this should look a little bit cleaner there we go All right. And that wraps up our forms series. Uh, the next series is going to be on creating interactive web pages. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be super sweet. So make sure you guys subscribe, stay tuned, and keep watching these tutorials. You're sure to learn something. And I will see you in the next tutorial.